What up fam? Welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. In today's video, we're gonna be further leveling up our leather crafting skills by making this badass helmet. Now all of the skills used to make this helmet have been covered in previous videos in more detail. This is just bringing all of those skills together to make kind of a bigger, more in-depth project. So if something seems to move too fast or you have some questions on it, um, just visit those other videos and odds are it's covered in more depth there. I will leave links to those videos in the description below. All right, so this isn't a crazy difficult project, but there are a lot of steps to it. So without much further ado, let's level up this skill. Step one, getting started. All right, to kick this bad boy off, we are going to need a template. Start by measuring that melon that's located three feet above your butt. Measure from the center of one ear to the other, going over your head. Then measure from right in between your eyes to the base of your skull. Finally, you'll need the circumference of that brain cage. Now make sure you're writing these down as you go because you will forget. All right, that's not really fair. I don't know what your memory is like. I know I forget and I'm putting my baggage on you. Sorry. So here's how those measurements are gonna relate to that template. Oh, first, you're gonna to wanna to start by adding an inch and a half to all of those measurements. That's to compensate for the fact that you're gonna be adding these little panels on the inside, which end up taking up that extra space. So if you make this exactly the size of your head, it's gonna be way too tight. In fact, you could probably add just an extra inch to every measurement altogether if you're planning on wearing something like chain mail underneath. Okay, so this is the shape we're looking for. And this right here is my top-down artistic rendering of my own head, in case you were wondering. Cut that circumference number in half and use that measurement for the top and bottom legs. The eyes to the back of the head measurement is the length of the template and the ear to ear makes up the middle. All that once cut up and everything is what's gonna make up this cross section crown piece right here. I decided to make each one of those sections two inches wide to give me plenty of room to lay down these rivets here. Then I cut my paper template out. And while you're at it, you're gonna to wanna to come up with a design for your little eyebrow guard, nose guard and cheek guard here too. I don't have any actual measurements for you on that one because I just kind of used my imagination until I saw a shape that I liked. So you should do the same. Add like fangs to this thing or do whatever you want. Use your imagination, that's kind of a fun part. Before transferring this to your leather, tape it all together and see if you like it. Just bring those little end legs over to the middle and tape them together. Then tape your mask onto the front. Cool, so assuming you like what you saw, it's time to roll out some leather. Lay your template down and carefully mark it out. This is a bit tricky to do with a paper template, so if you have access to some cardboard, I recommend you transferring it over to cardboard first so it's a little easier to trace onto the leather. Once that's all set, cut out your shapes with a sharp knife. As always, make sure your knives are good and sharp for a nice, clean, safe cut. All right, now that all those individual parts are cut out, it's time for step two, tooling the leather. So as always, we're gonna start by beveling off our edges using the aptly named tool, the edge beveler. Something deeply satisfying about how this thing just kinda effortlessly shears off those edges. I don't know, I like it. Once your edges are beveled, you're gonna wanna moisten them and hit them with the slicker tool. Actually, I find this bit strangely relaxing too. And it seriously makes a big difference. Like you're compressing down all those fibers that are on the end and the end product actually looks way more professional than it did just before you started with the slicker brush. All right, when you're done with that, let's take a second and go back over to your template and mark out where all the holes are gonna go for each of these rivets. Now, of course, you could have done this when you were making the template in the first place. Um, to be honest with you, I wasn't sure exactly the layout I was gonna go with when I first started this thing. So I didn't add it to my original template. But hindsight 2020 and all that, and it's never too late to go back and just adjust the template. So I placed these holes in one inch increments, a half of an inch from either of the edges. Except for the straps for the head circumference here, they only need one row by the inside edge. There's really no need to have them down here unless you want them decoratively. Now lay the template back down on your leather and mark out the holes with an awl or a punch or something. I then use my rotary punch to knock out all those holes. This is still one of my favorite tools. Like, it was probably $12, 12 or $13, I think, and it makes it so fast. Like it saves me a stupid amount of time. Well worth the investment. Using some small nuts and bolts, I put the crown together to test it out one more time. All right, so with that crown shape all locked into place, it's time to get these panels all cut and ready to go. To do this, I simply draped a rag over the piece and traced in the triangles. 
I then added in an extra inch around all sides. These don't have to be perfect yet, so aim for bigger, knowing that you can always trim it as you go to place them inside. Trace your shapes onto the leather, then cut them out. Now I decided to texture these the same way I did with my shoulder armor, link up here, as the dream is to have like a matching suit of armor. Like eventually I wanna do a whole chest piece and like into the legs and I don't know, it's gonna be awesome. So yeah, I'm using a similar design to that. To add that texture, I simply moistened the surface and started hammering this little scale design in. I opted to go a little heavier around the edges and then just kind of blend it all into the middle. Kind of has like a faded, battle-worn look to it, to me at least. Your project, of course, so you can do whatever you want. You can cut in fancy shapes or, you know, Celtic knots or whatever. Just a heads up though, we are gonna be wet forming this and when you wet form it, because you're gonna be pressing it while it's wet, it's gonna muddy up any details you put into it. In fact, if you're watching this and you're an experienced leather crafter, could you tell me the right order of operations to get around that? Because once it's shaped, it's hard to get the image in there the way you want it to. Uh, but if you do it beforehand, you get it all muddied up. So I just don't know the correct way to do that or if there is a correct way or it's just a thing you can't do. Um, so yeah, if you leave that down in the comment section, that would help us all out like a lot. Now for this face guard area, I decided to make this border here. To do that, I used a wing divider to make an even line all around the outside of the edge. I then went in and cut that groove with a swivel knife. To separate the border from the middle area, I used this bevel stamp and gently move the material away from the line I cut. The bevel stamp's awesome because it adds a lot of depth to a piece. So whenever you cut in a design, using that bevel stamp really kind of makes it stand out from the background of the piece. I then added that same dragon scale texture to the inside. All right, now that all that's prepped and ready, it's time for step three, shaping the leather. In this step, we're gonna be getting into the wet forming of leather into a desired shape. And it all starts with a pot of hot water. Now you want this water hot, but not so hot that you can't put your hands in it. You're gonna to wanna to put your leather in said hot water. At this point, you're gonna notice a lot of little bubbles coming out from the leather. This is air escaping the little cavities inside. With the air gone, the leather can compress and fill those gaps in. This ends up hardening the leather and making it more rigid. With that said, it tends to stay in whatever shape you put it in before it dries. Once you see the bubbles stop, it's time to remove the piece. Take note at how malleable it is at this point. You can press it and form it into basically any shape you want. Pretty cool, actually. Now, when you first take it out, it's a little bit too wet, so you're gonna wanna give it like 10 or 15 minutes to dry off a little bit. During this time, though, start soaking any of the other pieces you didn't get to yet. Now, I used Gary here to help me shape the crown. You're the only one who really understands me, Gary. If your existence is less sad and lonely than mine and you don't have a Gary, you can use like the inside of a bicycle helmet to form against or a significant other's head or your own head, I suppose. That being said, I did use my face to do all the face guard parts. It was pretty cool actually, like with a little bit of firm pressure, it takes on the whole shape that I wanted it to have and it stayed there. Um, I don't know, I found that pretty cool. Next, I use a big old salad bowl to round off those inner panel portions. I then placed them against the bowl so that they maintain their shape while they dried. Then I left everything to cure overnight. The next day, everything was dry and hardened to shape, which again, pretty cool. Like that two dimensional shape that was the face mask now has an actual human shaped face. Um, that bringing it into three dimensional space immediately makes it look cooler. That being said, it's all bland and leather colored. So it's time to pretty up this project with step four, dyeing the leather. So for this project, I decided to use a saddle tan and a medium brown dye, mostly because that's also the color of my shoulder armor so far. And again, I wanna have a whole set. Starting with the inner panels, I applied an even coat of medium brown, then polished them clean. For the face mask, I used a paintbrush to outline the space, then filled in the rest with the brown. I then went over the entire thing with the saddle tan just to fill in the border and to hit up any spaces that I might've missed with the brown. For contrast, I decided to use the saddle tan for the whole crown piece as well. Finally, with all the color in place, I used a leather bomb to really shine it up. It's one of those things where you really don't realize how much of a difference it makes until you see them side by side. Like this panel doesn't have any on it and this one does. 
Now, I don't know how well the camera picks that up, but it really does make a difference. When you hold it side by side, you're like, oh, this one looks good. And then you have the polished one and you're like, oh, that one looks way better. Uh, it really does have an awesome finished look to it. At least I think it's pretty. Speaking of pretty, it's time to take out your gum tragacanth and pretty up those edges. Just apply it to every edge and use your slicker to smooth everything down. A nice smooth edge is gonna make everything look way more professional. That's just science. Step five, putting it all together. All right, so it's the moment of truth. We're gonna take all these disparate parts that we just prepped and put them all together to make an awesome helmet. For this purpose, I'm using the same rapid rivets that I used in my shoulder guard video. Should be in step five, I believe, if you're in a bit of a rush. Simply place the post through the holes and add on the cap. Then hammer them in place with a recommended anvil and striker. It's super easy, which is good because there is a lot of these. Seriously, it's the part that took the most amount of time. Um, it's not hard, it's just a little tedious. Once the crown is together, position the panel inside and mark wherever your holes need to go. Then punch said holes and rivet the panel into place. So here's a bit of a pro tip. You're gonna need to get up into this helmet in order to hammer these things into place. To do that, I just positioned a two by three inside of a clamp and I use this Dep Blue stick. Um, it is a putty that you usually use to hang up posters. It's actually how I hang stuff up on my wall here. Use that just to kind of hold the little anvil in place so it wasn't sliding around. Super simple solution, but it worked really, really well. Just a little tip for you so you don't have to wander around trying to figure out how to make this thing work. So once you get all your panels in place, you, my friend, have a nifty helmet. You could stop there and just have a nifty helmet, or you can make that nifty helmet into an epic helmet by adding on this little faceplate. The faceplate is easy. You just put all the pieces together using the rivets in any kind of fashion you see fit. Again, with the faceplate bit, I don't know what design you decided to go with. Um, for me, I just use two rivets to hold kind of the nose guard to everything else, and then two more rivets to hold it onto the actual brim of the helmet. Depending on what you decided to go with, your designs may vary. But come on, look at this thing. Look at this thing. It is so dope. So I'm not gonna lie, like people have been requesting this for a little bit and I was a little scared to tackle it because I didn't think I had the requisite skills to make it as good as I was envisioning in my head. But it's kind of the beauty of the way these videos are working out. And this isn't like a kind of toot my own horn, like my, my videos are awesome, but it really has been kind of very simple projects leading up to more complex projects. And every skill that I use to make this is something I went over in other projects. And each time it kind of builds up on them a little bit. So like the wet forming, we did a little tiny bit of wet forming in the last project. And this time it was much heavier and we did a lot of wet forming. So I just kind of like how they're stacking up. All that being said, I might not have even thought to tackle this project if it wasn't for the following skill monkeys. Thank you guys for leaving the request in the comment section. I really, really do appreciate you doing that. And if any of you want to see me cover any skills, leave it in the comment section and I will add it to the list. Also, if you like what you saw or you found it useful, how about you hit me with that sweet thumbs up, love, and consider subscribing so you know when I release new content. All right, well, I better get ready for work. One of the other guards is on sick time with an arrow to the knee. Maybe I should make knee armor next time. Anyway, in the meantime, keep leveling up, you.